Good morning. Welcome back to book club. It's the big one today. I've been waiting to do this one. I'm so excited. Uh, I usually don't write down notes. It's probably painfully obvious, but I don't usually take notes. I just like talk to myself. Uh, I do have notes this time. All right, here we are. Today we're talking about From Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire the first and the second book in the Blood and Ash series. The third book is coming out in April, so I am impatiently waiting for that. Uh, I do want to say real quick that I will be doing a Miley Cyrus video. Her album doesn't come out until November 27th, and then I need to like process it and listen to it and gather my thoughts and feelings, and then I will make a video on it. And then I'll probably also in that video cover the album and her other covers that she's been doing and um, the singles and the music videos and whatever else. All right, so let's just get into it because there is a lot to cover since it's two books. And since it's a high fantasy series, there's all kinds of stuff, all right? So I'm just gonna say, if you haven't read these books, then don't watch this. And it's gonna be spoilers only and I'm not gonna recount the plot because it's just too much. If you haven't read it, it's not gonna make sense anyway. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is go through the characters and their relationships and then cover the plot and then I'm going to cover some theories for what happened. I think that's the order that I'm going to go in. Um, it's kind of hard to organize this. I don't know how to talk about two books at the same time and there's a lot to cover. So the characters. We got Poppy, our main character. I really really liked that she was like a strong character that she uh was well-rounded that she was like a whole person who like had conflicting views on stuff you know what I mean like she she would feel like stuff was wrong but then she could only be silent I like when she said that she had never wanted to be the maiden like since she was rebelling like she'd been going to the red pearl she'd been sneaking out she'd been training with Victor like she she never wanted to be the maiden and Castile was just like a catalyst for that for breaking out of the maiden role but she was the one who wanted to do it she initiated it I don't know how I feel about that just being like said outright though like I really am a fan of show don't tell I'm not gonna harp on these books for the writing because it was really good so I'll I'll excuse it I do think that Poppy is kind of a Mary Sue though like she always has the ability to do what she needs to do I, that's more of a problem in the second book I'll say that like she as her powers are developing she's just able to like Merc like 25 people at a time she was never able to do that previously and then only she can only do it when the plot needs her to do it um that was bothering me a little bit in the second book but otherwise I mean I guess there's like explanations for why she can fight and why she like has like her little emotional ability thing which I loved I loved the emotions thing uh I thought it was really unique in the way that in the first book especially where it's like she can just feel other people's emotions and then she like uses it to see if somebody's lying or not I really like that um I thought it was clever and then Castile Hawk whichever you want to call him the dark one um hot just hot uh men written by women are Mwah. because the author knows she knows Jennifer you knew what you were doing. You knew what he should say. Um, I've read some other romance novels where I can't even read the spicy stuff. Like I'll skip entire scenes of them dialoguing about their feelings for each other because the dialogue is so horrible and cringy. This was not that at all. The dialogue was so good. Their banner between each other bah, uh, was insane. So good, realistic, not cringy um, and sexy. I'll say it. Yeah, a couple of my favorite hawk lines. I don't remember anything that Poppy said. I'm gonna be honest. Don't remember one single thing that she said. I do remember Hawk though. So, at at uh Ryland's funeral, which we'll talk about that. Ryland's funeral, when he turns to her and goes, You've been injured. That will never happen again. Secondly, when he swore to protect her and he didn't say the maiden, he said her. And then at the end of the first book when he's like, just remember that this was real. Goodbye. Oh, just his, his dialogue. That's what I'm saying. It's not cringy. It's like, whoa. Like, especially the thing where he was like, 
you've been injured, that won't happen again. It's like subtle because it makes sense on the storyline because he's about to become her like guard. But then it also like means something deeper. Oh, I just, that's so, that is excellent. That's excellent right there. Um, then we got Victor, Daddy Vic, uh, dies, sadly, wrecked me. I knew he was dead because I read the second book first, but still, it was a painful thing. Rip Victor, yeah, and he was just, as soon as he said that, I knew, I mean, I guess I knew it was gonna happen at that time because, like, that was when the attack was happening on the, on the right, but when he's like, I'm so proud of you, I was like, it's about to happen. Anytime they say something nice, that's when it's all about to go downhill. And then we have Rylan, who dies very early on. He was nice. He was a nice man. Um, and he kind of set the plot in motion. So he, it didn't mean nothing. It, his death meant something to this book. Then we got, I'm going to group together the Duke and Lord Mazine. And they're both horrible. And they both die. One gets killed by Hawk slash Cass. And the other one gets killed by Poppy, which... That's, what, that's another thing about the Mary Sue thing. She, like, kills, like, a lord and nobody cares. There's, like, yeah. I mean, makes sense. He was a douche. Like, she can't even show her eyeballs, but she can murder somebody and everybody is just, like, cool with that. Um, who else we got? We got Tawny, uh, the BFF. She's fine. I have no, I don't really have any notes on her. We have the Duchess who, I don't know. Are we supposed to like her in the first book? Are we supposed to, like, I don't know. Poppy empathizes with her after the Duke dies and she's like, why would I think that he's treating his wife any better? Which I understand, but also I'm not going to feel bad for you. I'm not, I'm just not. I think that's all the main characters from the first book. Second book, we learn a lot more about Kieran, very loyal and also like weirdly aloof. Like, I don't know if I like, I guess I liked Kieran. I don't have anything against Kieran, but he... There's nothing there. There's no spiciness. I liked his sister better. Um, I forgot what the sister's name was, but I liked her. And I think that's pretty much all the new people in the second book that are important. I do want a couple things. I want to talk about a couple things that happen in the book. When she stabs him. That whole scene is, is that, uh, what am I supposed to say? She stabbed him. In the heart. Okay, first, I'll just go through this whole thing because I want to talk about how she almost got killed. Okay, that's the only thing that wasn't Mary Sue-like when she literally almost killed. And then we have uh, Hawk come in with his magic blood, which, whatever. But I really thought that she was going to, like, Mary Sue her way out of it and get out of it. Uh, no, literally almost died. Hawk saves her with his blood. Then she wakes up. Then she stabs him in the heart. Like, literally means to kill him. And then something happens in the snow outside, dude. Oh my gosh. That, just that scene, this book needs to win like a Nobel Prize. Whatever other writing uh, accolades there are, this book needs to win just for that series of events. I also like how Hawk was like, don't call her maiden. Don't ever address her as maiden. And I like how when he was her guard, he kept saying like, take off the veil. I don't like arguing with half your face. I don't like looking at half your face. And like, you know, I don't know, didn't want her to be the maiden. Twice got her little dagger and didn't let her lose it. Yeah, I guess I just like the overall themes of like, deciding your own destiny and standing up against oppressive systems. Obviously, that's gonna speak to most people. Uh, some things I want to talk about in the second book were the world the world building. So in the first book, a little bit occurs, but in the second book, you really get to understand like the entirety of the map kind of, especially when you learn more about the Atlanteans and whatever they are doing and their little towns and whatever. And you're also, the second book entirely shifts. The first book, you find out that the Ascended are bad, right? But then in the second book, you already know that they're bad and you're kind of viewing it from the outside. So when they come and attack her or when the like they know somebody's looking for her whatever you whenever you see an ascended or you see a little craven or whatever you know that it's their fault like in the thing completely shifts and i like that they didn't make her waver back and forth like when the the i think the duchess comes right and she's like you have no idea what you're doing 
you're the queen's granddaughter. You did what she always wanted to do to get to Atlantia. You know what I mean? That whole thing. I like that they didn't make Poppy waver on if they're good. Like, she didn't think, like, oh, maybe they are, maybe they are good for me. I like that they didn't. Like, she decided in the first book, and she's sticking with it. And not that she trusts Hawk, what Hawk's saying, but she trusts her own decision making and rationale behind not being a maiden and like giving up on the ascendant um a lot of people also on tiktok said that this was an enemies to lovers book no um she stabs in the heart once but like they both love each other at the beginning like they're not enemies she just like doesn't trust him i don't think that's the same thing and i'm really down for enemies to lovers stuff this just isn't it and it's fine Obviously, these books are very good. The romance is very good without it. It doesn't need an enemies to lovers thing. Uh, but I wouldn't classify it as that. Ugh. I just read this on my notes. This is kind of out of place. But also Hawk saying, I'm unworthy. Stop. Oh my gosh. Stop. 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 That's what I'm saying. Me and my sister were just talking about this. Men, read one book read one like romance book could even be a fan fiction okay written by a woman and they'll tell you what you need to say they'll tell you how you need to act they'll tell you what we think is cute what we think is not cute okay it's all in the book just read one book but hawk saying i'm unworthy oh man okay now we can talk about the end of book two what the hell was that I've literally went back and read it like five times because I don't understand what is going on. Um, I also, I went on TikTok, okay, obviously. I don't know what to think about this. So I went on TikTok to see what other people had to say about their theories and stuff. Honestly, I did not know what was going on. When it was like, and then a blood tree appeared. I was like, why, where are we? We're like, we're on like a marble floor, right? Now there's just a tree. I was very confused about everything. And then uh they foreshadowed a lot in book two like her calling the wolven her talking to the wolven and whatnot uh but when the wolven like come and surround her it kind of seems like they're gonna attack her like that part's not very clear but I don't think that's right obviously I think that it's like they were going to attack whoever was gonna come after her then the queen comes up the queen of Atlantia comes up and she's like okay I'm gonna take off my crown here you go and poppy's just like what and then hawk's just like quiet castile whatever is just silent I'm like say something oh i wanted him to come in when like all the people are about to murk her but she um like electrocuted them <laughs> so i'm saying i don't know what was going on so this is the theory i stole this from at my darling abigail on tiktok we know that Poppy is the granddaughter of the Queen of Macedonia. And then another thing we also know, back when it was only Atlantia, they had a king, Malik, they had, and then he had a wife who's still the Queen of Atlantia. And then he also had a side piece. His side piece name was Isbeth. So basically the theory is that Malik and Isbeth, and we don't really know what happened to them. They're just like, oh, they ran away. So Malik and Isbeth had a child who is Poppy's mom. So then Isbeth became Queen Eilina. And so now she's the queen of, of Macedonia. So that would make Poppy Isbeth's, and Isbeth was the first ascended, Isbeth's granddaughter. And I don't really know who her mom is. Her mom is just a random uh, person. Not really sure where her mom fit in all of this. But Malik was the, was, a descendant of Nikdos, who's a god. So that would make Poppy like a descendant of a god, which would make her very powerful. And that's why they said that she was linked to all the ascension. And we know that she's like an Atlantean and a god so that she could probably, you know, turn everybody into ascended for uh, the rest of time. That's what I'm thinking. So I think that she's part God. She's a, a descendant of a God. And that's why the queen of Atlantia was like, take my crown because that would automatically make Poppy in charge of everybody because she's descended from a God again. 
Okay, so then also, then Alistair is heartmates with the Queen of Atlantia. So I think that the Queen of Atlantia, so Castile's mom, like had her parents killed and attacked her. And I don't know how she got out of it, but it would make sense because if Poppy survived and then found her way to Atlantia, then that would make her the queen. And that queen's trying to like not make that happen. So that means that Cass's mom tried to have her killed. And now she has her kingdom. Like now she's the queen. She took that spot from her husband's mom. Oopies. Um, a question I do have is about Poppy's mom. So why wasn't her mom ascended? Like, why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they just make her, like, live forever? Can you do that to an Atlantean? That would make Poppy's mom an Atlantean. That's what I'm saying. I'm very confused. But I do think that she is the granddaughter of the queen and related to Malik. I think both of those things are true. But I don't really know all the details. I'm very excited to see how they'll work out in April. Good for Jennifer Ella Armentrout. Good for her for pumping out so many books. There's so, she's written so many books and these two are the only two I've read. I plan to read more. They're so good and unique. I I saw on a book TikTok, uh, she doesn't usually write like high fantasy stuff and this is so good. So good for her. I'm happy that this one's coming. I think that the second book, I think A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire came out this year. And so for her to be releasing the third book in April is insane. Obviously, both of these books are getting five out of five stars. Five out of five spicy rating, five out of five plot, five out of five world building, five out of five characters, five out of five dialogue, the romance. I just, I love this book. I had an extreme book hangover, like no joke, not even an exaggeration for like an entire week. I didn't know what to do. I was lost. I, I forced my mom and sister to read it so I could talk about it to somebody. Um, I watched every TikTok that exists about these books. I'm emotionally attached to these books. I love them. I'm so excited for April. Obviously this video is for people who have already read the books. Go force other people to read them. Follow me on Goodreads. The next video is probably gonna be the Miley Cyrus video. Although I did just get Kindle Unlimited. So if I read a really good book, then I'll probably do a video about that. All right. Thanks, book club. I'll see you on the next one.